door has a key. There's a key to every situation. Behind every unopened door, there is a mystery. And the opening of this door introduces us to another in the series, the key. Well, what is it this time? I don't know. Seems things aren't going right. What do you expect, locking yourself in there all day? Seems to me some people aren't right in their heads. No. Look, I don't want to do it, but I have to. Something makes me. Clothes to men? Ironing? About the time you got down and wrote another novel. Writing started it. Writing, getting inside a character so you... You don't know which is which. You're the one not making money. What does happen when you die? I don't know. I'm still here and I'm about through. Paul Vernon. Publishers don't call. Agents aren't interested. Paul Vernon. Right off, they say. Are you going to do some work or aren't you? Locking yourself in that room all day? Fergie, I can't. Not can't, won't, not can't, not interested. Can't, can't. I've got to know what happens when you die. Thinking of it all the time, can't think of anything else. Get you. What happens? What happens? I starve. And you don't look so good yourself. Are oh, you not going back into that room? Yes. I'm sorry, Virgie. You can think yourself into any character and what they do. Think. I'm going to think myself into what happens when they die. You look more dead than alive yourself. I am dead. In my mind. My mind has stepped over. Maybe I'll follow it. I've been waiting for you, Paul Vernon. Have you? Been talking to Virgie here. <laughs> she told me you didn't look so good. She's right. No, I'm all right. But tired. Uh, tired. It's dark in here, isn't it? Well, what do you want, Mr. Curzon? You. I want you to work for him. Again. You see what he's like, Mr. Curzon? Yes, yes. Tell you what, Paul, I've got room for a good novel. Action, terse dialogue, fast. Stuff you can do. Could do it on your ear once. I can't make any promises, of course, but uh, there's a couple of thousand dollars advance in for you, if you like. Paul? Hmm? Oh, uh, no thanks. Paul! Death. Death, Mr. Curzon. Do you know what happens when you die? Religious man, I, I believe in uh, what I'm told. Do you? He doesn't believe in anything, except being crazy. Me, I starve. And I'm not starving anymore. The mind is a peculiar thing. There's the mind you think with, there's the mind that doesn't think. It knows. The mind that wakes you up and you want, the mind that's deep, knows all nature. The mind that shares, shares you and me and her and the Dixons next door and all the people everywhere. Trees, the wind, cows eating grass. I wouldn't know. Nor does he. Minds. Minds are like radio sets. TV, you switch them on, tune them in, you got... You've got ears. Radio's got mics, you've got a voice, the radio has a speaker. They're all tuned in, all listening to each other. Talking. Communication. Then the radio goes bust. You've had it dead. Now the radio's dead, the radio waves go on. That's death. Die, you're not a radio set anymore, you're... A part of nature. Like waves. You're alive. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you're you. You're the man I can see. You're smug and a big noise in the publishing world, but you're you. You die. You're not you anymore. 
part of the world, universe, stars, God beyond, all sorts of things we don't know about, because we haven't got the imagination. Yes, well, uh, we'll find out about that, shan't we? At the moment, as you say, I'm a publisher. I've got money to make. And I want it now because I'm told <laughs> you can't take it with you. <laughs> uh, how about it, Paul? Paul? You're a good writer. Uh, well, uh, were. Paul, tell him. It's all right, Mr. Curzon. He'll write for you. Oh, that's a commission, Paul. Two thousand. Let me have the book as soon as you can. Say, uh, three months? Paul? Oh, oh, oh an author. <laughs> oh, biggest darn use he's ever invented. But he'll write for you, Mr. Curzon. Give him a bit of time. He, he's not very well, but he'll be all right in a few days. He'll be mashing that typewriter as though he hated it. Won't you, Paul? Well, a writer who writes to order is no darn good except for hack stuff, run of the mill. A writer who won't write when he's told, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> the trouble is you can't get him to write. <laughs> but Paul will, knowing how poor we are, he'll write. You'll get books, Mr. Curzon, as good as ever you got. Better. Well, I hope so, Mrs. Vernon. I hope so. I promise you. Okay, we'll leave it at that. But nothing about uh, death and after, Mrs. Vernon. People don't like to think about it, don't like to read it. Death is strictly for sentiment. Because <laughs> if you could do another uh, Camille or Tale of Two Cities, then I'd be interested. No, better he sticks to the private eye and bashing the girl stuff, though. I'll speak to him, Mr. Curzon. Mm -hmm. Now he's got the chance again. You watch, he'll be writing day and night. Won't you, Paul? Paul? Yes, well, um, I'll take your word for it, Mrs. Vernon. Goodbye. Nice to see you again. <laughs> nice neighborhood, Mrs. Vernon. Maybe your husband would do a Dracula, huh? <laughs> a big market for creepy horrors. <laughs> Think about all. Uh, he's thinking. You know how writers like to be left alone when they're thinking. Yes, well, um, too much thinking is as bad for the bank balance as it is for the brain. <laughs> uh, Goodbye, Mr. Vernon. Very nice to have met you again. Goodbye. Well, they don't understand. But you will write again. Oh, fancy Mr. Curzon coming all the way from town to see you. You will write, won't you, dear? I don't understand. I'm not talking nonsense. Honest, I'm not. No, dear. I've been across the sea. I've been. I know what it's like to die. a job for psychiatrists and me, Mrs. Vernon. I can give med a few pills, even operate, but it won't help. Not when your husband's got himself so depressed, as you say. It's not depression. What he's thinking about is so important to him, he hasn't got time for anything else, that's all. Well, I can see him if you like. Oh, would you? I can get him to come here. Would you come and see him at home? It's very important, you see. He's been commissioned to write a book. Excuse and... me, but does he know you're here? Does he know you've asked me to go around and see him? I told him I was coming here. What did he say to that, Mrs. Vernon? Nothing. Nothing at all. I see. Uh, would this afternoon do? I could call around about six. Would you? Oh, yes, six would do beautifully. Thank you very much, Doctor. Not at all. Six, then. And don't worry if you can help it, Mrs. Vernon. Sometimes the key to the whole situation is quite simple. And you know, a wife worrying communicates it to the husband. I'll see you a sec. Thank you. Virginia! Virginia! Oh, hello, Mother. I saw Mrs. Percy outside the street, and she said she'd seen you. How are you, Virgie, dear? Oh, I must say you don't look too well. I'm all right, Mother. I... Came to see about Paul. That man. He's my husband. Worst luck. I know. Mother, minute he... we're not going through all that again. You haven't seen me for such a long time. Is he ill? No. Well, he's overworked. Strange. Hmm. So I heard. Heard, my dear, everybody. Simply everybody knows he hasn't written a book for years. How would they know? There's none for sale. No new one. 
Not that I cared much for all that blood. My dear, tell Mother. There's nothing wrong, really. Poor girl. So brave. Mother, please. I'm your mother, dear. I'm here for you to confide in. Be a strange sort of mother if you didn't tell me anything. And you don't. She's not well. Run down, that's all. Of course, dear. I'm sure there's nothing in all those rumors. Everybody knows his grandfather was odd, but nobody pays any attention to that sort of thing nowadays. Odd? Odd? Who was odd? His grandfather. Of course, I didn't say anything because you weren't very understanding at the time. Oh, he was a most peculiar man. My dear, he wanted to know what happened when he died, so he took a gun and found out. My dear, it's nothing like that. About Paul. No. No, whatever made you think that? Paul wouldn't be so silly. Oh, of course not, Virgie, darling. Well, it is nice to see you. We must... Virgie, darling. What is the matter? Are you sure it wasn't you who went to see the doctor? I must get back. Paul will be expecting me. I'll have to hurry. I'll see you later, though. <laughs> Up, but he looks awful. Could you get here as quickly as possible, please? I... Well, as soon as you can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Paul is coming as soon as he can. How do you feel, darling? Do you feel all right? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I feel fine. Who's coming? The doctor. I just phoned him, and he's coming as quickly as possible. Look, Ill. I thought it was a heart attack. No, no. Virgie, I know what it's like to die. Don't be so silly, darling. I know what happens. The brain. Get rid of everything. The brain. Feeling all the things. Sight, feel, everything. And what's left is what happens. Yes, dear. Wouldn't it be better if you lay down? Oh, it's not what happens to the body. It's, it's energy. Power. It's all vital force. You know what it is? It's the spirit within us. Don't talk. Rest. You'll be all right, dear. The doctor will be here and everything will be all but right. But you must listen. I tell you, I know. I know the secret. I know what happens when you die. It's important, Virgie. You must listen to me. It's not a secret anymore. It's... There's the doctor at last. Please, Virgie. Don't worry, dear. I'll let him in. You'll be all right. Please listen. I won't get another chance. Don't go, Virgie. I'll come back. I won't be another moment. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Vernon. We didn't mean to frighten you. Mr. Dixon. Matter of fact, my, my wife and I, we heard... Uh, well, we were wondering if you were all right. All right? The walls aren't terribly thick, you know, and we heard... Yes. Uh, is everything all right? Uh, you're all right, aren't you? I thought you were the doctor. The... Uh, the doctor. Trouble? I... Uh, no. No, not really. It's nice of you to... No. No, as a matter of fact, Paul had an attack. I... I, I don't know what it is. I, I've sent for the doctor. I, I was a nurse. Uh, yes, uh, Peggy was a nurse. Uh, perhaps she could help. Well, I... Oh, it's no trouble, Mrs. Vernon. After all, we've got to do what we can. Uh, yes, I... Well, he's in... Here. It's 
sort of collapsed. I told the doctor by the time I got back, he'd recovered a bit. Uh, anything I can do? Yes, dear. Stay out here. The doctor comes. Let him in. Yeah, all right. I didn't know what to do. Paul, Mrs. Dixon from next door is coming to see you. She's a nurse. Uh, I was. Mr. Vernon, I think we'd better get you onto that couch. Is he ill? Very ill? Not well, Mrs. Vernon. Jack, come in here a moment. Yeah. We want to get Mr. Vernon onto the couch. Yes, he, uh, he certainly doesn't look well. Uh, could you manage? Yep. Uh, I think it'll be easier if we uh, brought the couch over here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. And now I, uh, I think I can lift him across. Now, I'll tell you what we'll do, Pig. I'll lift, and you pull the chair away. Now, you are right? Right. And here we go. Uh. Uh. Ah, he's very heavy. Yeah. Uh, there. Is he all right? Well, uh... uh. I'm not a doctor, Mrs. Vernon. I don't know what's wrong. If he's comfortable, all we can do is wait. Has he been ill? Before, I mean. No. No, just ordinary things. Nothing serious. He wants to know what happens when you die. He wants to know what? What happens when you die? Yeah, I must confess I've wondered that myself. <laughs> you know, the older you get, the more you do. Well, naturally. You told me he... He's tried to find out. Oh, no. No, nothing like that. He wanted to know he didn't do anything about it. To himself. He... He thought about it. It was... Intellectual, you know? Uh, well, uh, the doctor will be here soon. He seemed to think he did know. He told me he did. When I came back from seeing the doctor. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go and see if he's shown up yet. The sooner we can get him, the better, huh? Birdie. It's all right, darling. The doctor will be here soon. You must listen. It's very important. Lie well, quiet, dear. I know what happens. Listen, it's... The doctor. Oh, is that the doctor, Jack? Yeah, it sounds like him. I'll go and let him in. Birdie, listen. This is what happens. Do lie quiet, Paul. You're not well. Now, here's the doctor coming now, and you'll be all right. Here's the doctor. He's coming now. Thank goodness. And you don't know what's wrong. It's no joke. Lie quiet, dear. Virgin. Virgin. Good afternoon. Oh, I was waiting for you, Doctor. It seems to me he's pretty ill. There he is. I won't be a moment, dear. I'll come right back. Where are the next door neighbors, Doctor? Very kind of you to look in. Thank goodness you've come, Doctor. My busy day. Sorry I couldn't get here earlier. I came as fast as I could. Oh, well, here. Let me take your coat, Doctor. Oh, well, thank you. Well, what seems to be the trouble? It was... It was when I got home after seeing you, Doctor. He'd... He just collapsed across his table. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Dixon were kind enough to come in and help me. Good. Well, we'll take a look at him, shall we? Yes. He's, he's in here. We got him onto the couch. Oh, uh, can I take your bag, Doctor? No, thanks. Uh, this way? Yes. Oh, dear. I am glad you're here. I'll have my bag, thanks. Close the door, please, Mrs. Vernon. Yes. Oh. Hmm. Well, we better get back. Look ghastly, didn't they? Awful. Poor Mrs. Vernon. The poor? Well, I suppose we've got to die sometime. Dead? Well, I, I thought he was... Dead? He was talking. I suppose we'd better wait. It was obvious he was at death's door. Yeah. yeah I didn't like to say. Well, I hope she'll be all right. Doesn't look as if there's any money here. You know, Pig, he, uh, he used to be a famous author. Well, he's not now. Not an author. Nor a famous. Thank you for being so kind. He's dead. Mrs. Vernon, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry. It's gone. Even the room looks different. 
empty. Is there anything we can do? You've been very kind. Thank you, but I don't think so. Now he knows. No? About what happened afterwards. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Funny. I suppose if you get too curious, that's what happened. He thought he knew before he died. Yes, he, he, he did seem preoccupied the last time I spoke to him. Something about a, a, a character he was going to write in, in a book. Uh, this one died, too. It seemed he thought he knew this character so well that he could follow him after he died. <laughs> funny way of writing a book. Uh, uh, funny to me, anyhow. Uh, we'll leave you, Mrs. Vernon. Unless you'd like us to stay. You've been very kind. Goodbye, I'll be... Oh, you're there. Sit down, Mrs. Vernon. Do sit down. I'll give you something to take three times a day after meals. Your husband was an author, wasn't he? Yes. Queer fish. I don't mean that disrespectfully. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. You don't have to answer. Plenty of time later on. It's all right. Has he been ill for some time? No, not ill. He was thinking a lot. Deep thoughts. Dark. Seemed almost his thoughts became bigger than him. As though he was his thoughts. He didn't eat. This... What happens after death? Yes. He thought he knew, finally. Did he say so? Yes. Did he say what happened? He tried to. I wasn't listening. I was too worried. I see. Well, I won't worry you anymore, except to tell you to go and lie down. You must, Mrs. Vernon. Yes. Perhaps you'd help him? Of course. Come along, Mrs. Vernon. I'll make you something hot to drink. Uh, anything wrong, Doctor? Uh, anything I can do? Did you know him well? Oh, not particularly. Next door neighbor, that's all. I see. This knowing what happens after you die, did you hear him talk about it? No, Doctor. Only Mrs. Vernon seems to have. And she's forgotten. She wasn't paying attention, poor woman. No wonder. Hmm. A pity. Well, tell Mrs. Vernon I'll arrange everything. And see nobody goes in there till I come back. Anything wrong, Doctor? I don't know. Yes. You see, clinically, old Vernon died at least 24 hours ago. Closing door finishes the story. Next week, another key will open another door to another story. Mystery. Romance. Or adventure. All start when a door is unlocked by... The Key.